Sammy Guevara, Matt Hardy have a little hype video. Matt's just being all crazy and wacky. And Sammy says, we're not the bad guys. We are the good guys. We don't want to hurt anyone, but we're going to. <laughs> so the main event of this show is Sammy Guevara versus Matt Hardy. You know your reaction last week when Vanguard 1 was destroyed? And you said, this is too far. Or I, I can't take this part of Matt Hardy, whatever you said about it. That's how I felt about Matt's offense in this match. When he's out there slamming Sammy's hands one by one into the apron and then squeezing his head against the ring post. I thought, well, what am I watching? What is this? You're watching Damascus, dude. So they're doing their match. If I were in charge of a wrestling company, I would not have Matt Hardy doing long main event singles matches on my TV show. There's better options on this roster. It's not bad, but it's not good. It's just an average wrestling match going longer than it needs to. Matt hits about 20 twist of fates. Sammy takes a great bump for every single one of them. And Matt also, at one point, was biting Sammy's toes, which is funny because if you're not familiar, Matt Hardy stole this look from the villain of the first Mad Max movie who's named Toe Cutter. Matt's probably wanting to do that for about five years. Eventually, one of these twists of fates finishes. I was very underwhelmed by this main event. I thought this match was pretty good. I didn't think it was as good as the Orange Cassidy match. No, God, no. But the only the only criticism I really have, I, I didn't mind Matt's offense. I thought Sammy was great. The only thing that was weird about the match is Sammy goes for a shooting star press. He misses. Matt hits a twist of fate. Sammy kicks out. Then, like, three minutes later... Sammy goes for a shooting star press. Matt gets the knees up, hits the twist of fate, and pins him. They did the exact same sequence twice. Yeah. And the second time was the finish. It's just weird. I, it, I, I don't know. I didn't get it. So Matt's about to do more to the Sammy Guevara fella when the inner circle appears in the big screen and they're torturing Kenny Omega in the football field. You got him pinned against the goalpost. And- Actually, it's funny because Jericho shows up on the big screen with Kenny. He's cutting a promo, but there's no audio. And the yes. fucking wrestlers in the crowd start going, what? <laughs> I died. Oh, that's awesome. And finally, well, they got the audio. They in. got the audio. Promo. So they're, they're whacking on Omega with this baseball bat. Matt Hardy has to make his bow-legged run up the stairs to go try to make the safer his friend. And... <laughs> they're beating him up and they're beating Omega up and the camera now cuts just full time to the football stadium and you see two figures stand up in the stands in the background and I forget which announcer it was I think it was a scalloper but one of them very nonchalantly just says oh it's the Bucks <laughs> why not and then like a second later it kicks in it's the Young Bucks they're finally back so the young bucks do dives out of the stands and starts making the save. They're working in protective masks, which made me laugh. Did you did you watch the young bucks uh, on on uh, being the elite two hundred the match they had at their house? No, I did not. Okay, so they're at their house. There's a there's a tennis court, and uh, Nick does like a pescado. There's like this big wall. It's probably eight ten feet uh, on the side of the tennis court. He dives off this wall onto his brother on the tennis court. Like right. a, a 10 foot Pescado onto a tennis court. Okay. Right. Not meant for landing on. No, but he does it. And then he gets up and he says, House show dive. It's a Pescado. <laughs> so I laughed. But anyway, <laughs> so here we are. It's weeks later. And Matt and Nick both do a house show dive, a simple Pescado onto all the bad guys. And somehow, Matt busts his rib on it. Ah. And like, I watched, I, I heard about it before it happened, and I watched it, and I'm like, how in the fuck did you hurt your rib, dude? It was a perfect landing. Everybody caught him. It wasn't a phoenix. He just did a simple dive, and somehow he busted his rib. As of today, it looks like it's only bruised, so I presume he's working the pay-per-view, but last night the doctor thought it was broken. But anyway... So then he for, lands. For, for, for clarity, this is Matt Jackson, Matt not Jackson, Matt Hardy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Matt Jackson, he he blows at his rib, but he like keeps wrestling or whatever, keeps brawling, and so I knew his rib was injured because I'd heard about it earlier. So now I'm really just watching him, like fuck, this guy's you know still doing all this shit, and all of a sudden this big fucking hoss Jake Hager 
just oh, starts fucking pounding on him with these forearms to the back. <laughs> like, oh, God, this poor guy. Hager's just beating the shit out of this poor guy with these forearms. By the end, Matt's holding his rib. Ah! I was like, oh, God. Three on one show. Three on one show. That's a disaster. Brutal. So I'm watching this brawl, and to this point, there was stuff I liked on NXT. There was stuff I didn't like on NXT. There was stuff I liked on AEW. There was stuff I did not like on AEW, and I was really like thinking just I was just on the fence about which I was going to vote for. And I look in the in the background <laughs> of this football stadium, a tiny like a like three pixel tall figure goes dashing across my screen and dashing and dashing and it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and at some point it finally turns into hangman page who runs in and i think hit hager with a 50 yard lariat and the best part was i mean the whole spot is just about the run okay so you could have got away with just like a, a whatever clothesline he fucking took hager's head off (laughs) he just ran and fucking decapitated this guy the only thing that would have been better I'm going to put over Mike Sempervivi. This was his idea. Hangman should have been on a fucking horse. He, got a horse he should have run. Better. He should have been on a fucking horse, gone the whole length of the stadium, and then clothesline Hager from the horse. <laughs> that would have been the greatest. But this was second As, greatest. I, I, I went back and watched it because I, I, I didn't actually see where he came from the first time. I had to go back and watch. And it appears, and it's hard to tell because he's very, 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 very far away, that there is a door on the field that looked to be right about the 50-yard line. So he comes sprinting out of this door. And from the moment you see him, he is sprinting as fast as he can the whole way. So from the sideline to the center of the field is something like 30 yards. uh, Something like that. So he's going to go 30 yards sideways, get to the middle of the field, then turn right, and then the other 50 yards to the end zone. So he legitimately did like an 80-yard sprint for this clothesline. This has to be the longest clothesline in wrestling history. Oh, of course. And he was hauling. He was sprinting as fast as he could go. I'm laughing my balls off at this. It's just the best. And of course, because they knew what they were doing and they were gonna, they were gonna, what they were going to get, the camera is in the end zone, but off to one side, positioned perfectly so you see Paige hit the field and run all the way across and make us turn. There's no point where he's off camera. There's a few points where you may lose sight of him as he runs behind someone who's very close to the camera. But it's not like you can't see him or know where he is. It's just awesome. It, it, you know, it, it's like an, a nine-second setup for him to hit this clothesline and he finally just waffles Hager with it. And at, at this point, because I had been to the fence, I decided... If I end up voting for AEW, it's going to be because of that spot right there. That was the difference maker. Well, now's your chance. Eventually, the fight just kind of stops. Everyone's had enough. The 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 inner circle vanishes. Page, being Hangman Page, does not stick around to party with his friends. He walks up the ramp into the uh, building part of it to get a beer. The other members of the elite are left in the end zone, which has their logo in it, and their logo is on the screens behind them. As they all strike their poses, the Bucks are doing their biceps, Hardy's going delete, 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 and the show fades away. That was an awesome segment.